New research has shown that some of the most common illnesses we contract on Earth might have come from space, like colds or the flu. So today, let's go down this path of space pathogens and look at some diseases that came from or that are in outer space. Starting off this countdown, we have cardiovascular disease. So obviously, you can get heart disease here on Earth. But turns out that astronauts are more susceptible to it. Even if they went into space completely healthy with no heart problems, they could still develop cardiovascular disease. In fact, those that went on space missions have a four to five times higher rate of dying by cardiovascular disease. Scientists are still trying to pinpoint exactly what causes it. It may be that the astronauts exposure to radiation is more severe than we thought. So in space, the cells lining your blood vessels are more vulnerable and therefore get more damage from the harsh conditions in space. In fact, scientists are warning astronauts that future trips to Mars will shorten their lifespan greatly. In our ninth spot, we have space hitchhikers. And I'm not talking about humans that want to hitch a ride to space. We're talking about pathogens that astronauts carry with them on their missions. They might feel completely fine before launching, but space greatly lowers their immune system. Not only that, but space actually increases their virulence and growth. So it becomes stronger and could spread more easily. Easily. One test was done on staph, salmonella, and E. coli. They found that these bacteria reproduced more rapidly in space flight conditions. This is very problematic because it leads to increased risk of contamination and serious infection while in space. In fact, in 2006, NASA sent salmonella into orbit aboard the space shuttle Atlantis. The astronauts on board grew salmonella in space. When the shuttle returned to Earth, they infected mice with the salmonella and found that the salmonella from space killed mice faster than salmonella cultures grown on Earth. Isn't that insane? In our 8th spot, we have space disease. Going to space impacts astronauts both physically and psychologically. In fact, being in space has been known to cause a number of mental disorders, including anxiety and mood disorders. NASA thoroughly tries to prepare astronauts for space, but sometimes astronauts still get affected by the different conditions and being so isolated for so long. Like one second you're on Earth with gravity and the next you're shot full speed into a place with no gravity that could easily kill you. So yeah, that definitely is going to affect your body and brain health. A number of astronauts have returned home and developed severe anxiety, depression, and personality disorders. It's very sad and something that NASA hardly talks about. Moving on to number 7, we have the extraterrestrial sources. In the 1979 book Diseases from Space, authors and astronomers Fred Howell and Chandra Wickram Singh claim that many of the common diseases that affect us actually have their origins in space. These include the flu, the common cold, and whooping cough. Of course, research is still ongoing to see if this is really the case. For example, they apparently took samples of cosmic dust and gas clouds and they found that they had a match for desiccated bacteria. The bacteria found in influenza and other illnesses. However, their study was met with great criticism and many don't believe their findings. In our sixth spot, we have moon dust. The moon is actually a very deadly place, not only because it's hundreds of thousands of miles away from Earth, but because of its dusty surface. The moon surface is filled with lunar dust, which are very tiny and sharp toxic particles. The particles are 50 times smaller than a strand of human hair, and if inhaled, it can stay in your lungs for months. The longer the particles stay in your lungs, the more dangerous it is. When the Apollo astronauts returned from the moon, they had moon dust all over their spacesuits. It made their throats sore and eyes water. The particles are so fine, but are sharp like glass, so it felt like they were constantly breathing in sharp pieces of glass. Long term exposure can destroy lung and brain cells. It can cause lung disease or weaken your immune system, which can lead to a number of other diseases. Which is why astronauts are very careful about not getting moon dust on their suit. And if they do, they have to decontaminate themselves. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the disease on Mars. A number of scientists are worried about the colonization of Mars, if it even does happen. 
Why? Because there's still a lot we don't know about this big red planet. For starters, they believe that there could very well be single celled organisms living underground. If we go to colonize Mars, that means we would have to tap into the planet's subterranean resources. By doing so, this could release some unknown germ or bacteria. And as I mentioned before, bacteria in space is more serious and spreads faster. In our fourth spot, we have the Apollo missions. In 1968, during the Apollo 7 mission, Commander Wally Shira came down sick with a head cold only 15 hours after launch, which was a nightmare. Without gravity, mucus can't just drain out of your nose, so he was suffering really badly, and blowing your nose only makes it worse. Shortly after, it spread to his colleagues aboard the shuttle. Then in 1970, with the Apollo 13 mission, a number of astronauts got UTIs. In fact, Fred Hazy's UTI turned into a kidney infection. Basically, all sicknesses or diseases in space are horrifying. One, they spread super fast. Two, they impact astronauts twice as much, which can lead to other serious health complications. And three, there's no serious medical treatment that they can receive while in space. Moving on to number three, we have the toxic fungus. Turns out that when spacecrafts return from space, they are often covered in space fungi. On top of that, there are fungi living all over the International Space Station. The study done on the fungi has determined that it is Aspergillus flavus, which is known to produce carcinogenic and immune suppressing compounds. This fungi is known to form when it is stressed, and obviously space is a very stressful situation. So it's the perfect environment for it to thrive. Scientists are currently studying the toxic effects that it has on astronauts and what diseases exposure to it it can cause. In our second spot, we have Disease X. This is the name given to an unknown disease that space could be harboring. According to new research from scientists in Canada, Spain, and the US, and I quote, every day more than 800 million viruses are deposited per square meter above the planetary boundary layer. That's 25 viruses for each person in Canada. Which is insane. If this is the case, then chances are there's an unknown disease out there that hasn't come to Earth yet. Maybe this disease is unlike one that we have ever encountered before. We won't know until it hits us. And in our number one spot today, we have Solipsism Syndrome. Solipsism Syndrome is a mental disease that affects astronauts who stay in space for a prolonged period of time. It's described as a disease in which a person feels like the world outside of their mind is no longer real. The prolonged Prolonged period of isolation and different conditions in space contributes to the astronauts feeling this way. It has unfortunately affected a number of astronauts. And it took a while before scientists figured out what was going on and actually gave a name to this syndrome and acknowledged that it was real. However, they still don't know how they can prevent astronauts from developing this or how to help cure astronauts with this. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below. Do you like space? To me, it's terrifying. And now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 terrifying things recovered from Yellowstone Volcano. Juanita Brown commented, I was there a couple months ago. Yellowstone is beautiful, but deaf sketchy in places. Every place has its own like sketchy little pocket, you know what I'm saying? Every forest, every national park, you know, there's just places that you don't go. I, I want to go to Yellowstone though, minus the volcano if it explodes. It erupts, nah. Deanne Hilton commented, Yellowstone is gorgeous. I realize it can be deadly though. Follow the rules and you'll be okay most likely. That's what I heard too, that all places have their own hazards, you know? Um, that's why there are rules. But then unfortunately tourists are like, no, I want to go close to a bear. Look at it. I want to pet it. And then, rah, you know, that, that I was a bear. Uh, blaming 94 commented as someone from Montana we don't usually take pictures of animals in Yellowstone we take them when some out-of-stater gets too close to one yeah that's actually really funny can you imagine just like standing around waiting for like a tourist to go up and try and like take a picture with a bear or something like that that'd be funny also dangerous anyways all right guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. Mm -hmm.